All right, uh, good to get a win. Great environment here in Orchard Park, Western New York. The fans are outstanding. Um, it's really hard to play um, when they are like they were today. And, uh, and so we don't take that for granted. Much appreciated. Great, great overall win for the organization and the fans. And um, I thought it was balanced in all three phases. Everybody chipped in. It was a good disciplined win, uh, which is important. We took care of the football, took the football away. And the both O-line, D-line, did a good job controlling the line of scrimmage. Um, special teams answered a little bit for us after they, after they got a score. And um, so good, good to get a win. And um, the preparation all week was, was what helped us get here. We've talked about during the course of the week, Sean, Josh's history of responding to situations like Monday yeah. or whatever. I thought he went out and, and actually took what they gave him. And I mean, nine different receivers involved in the thing and ran it very, very well. Your thoughts on this? Yeah, I would agree. Um, the discipline, like I mentioned, was was present really with the whole team, and in particular Josh. And when when he does that, when he's willing to take what they give him and take those checkdowns, um, and then use his legs as well in, in a decisive way, he makes he makes it really hard to defend. John, was that was that approach that you took today? Was that baked into the game plan? Or were you trying considered an effort to try to take the easy ones? have a controlled passing game rather than take shots downfield? Uh, I think everything in moderation is what is what the game plan was. Um, and that's the way we have to play. That's that's, uh, that's how you win games, um, on the offensive side at least. So he, he did that. He took what was there. But he also made Josh plays. You, you can do both, right? He's shown that. I mean, today is <laughs> a great, great example of that. Um, so yeah, it's a great teacher today, great yeah. teacher. Yeah, probably the turning point momentum wise there. Um, they had a good first drive there and um, you know just situationally we could do some better things. I can put them in a better position as well and um, um, but DQ I think got his hands hands up and tipped it if I believe it was DQ, right? Russo, Greg. Okay, yeah. So I mean again it's when you affect the quarterback, usually good things happen. Talking about a week like the days after Monday's game, where he said he, he appreciates those weeks because it helps him to appreciate the good times and forces him to be better. Um, how much of his bounce back from some part games is, is can be attributed to just that mentality that he, he brings with him that way? Yeah, I mean, I think in more than anything, it's humility. Um, and when you approach every week with humility, um, you start in the right spot mentally, and that's that's important. Not that he normally doesn't do that, but when you have the games like last week, it forces you to be rather humble. And um, I know I keep talking about you know humble and hungry is that I just believe in that. And the minute you get out over your skis in this league is is the minute you get bit. And um, again, today's a great teacher. Coach, your run pass ratio was that ideal for you today? Well, again, I, I, I'll tip my hat to our offensive line and our, and our three running backs. And I know it's when you try when you when you have a good running game, it's not just the offensive line and the running backs. It's it's more than that. The tight ends, um, the wide receivers have to block. So it's usually a team effort uh, when you have a good a good day running the football. But it's important that we have that. Right? We can be a two dimensional offense, pound the ball when we need to pound it. Um, you know, so it's. Uh, I, I was I was proud and pleased to see that. Uh, it makes again when you can control the line of scrimmage. It makes uh, play calling a lot easier. Cliche run and stop the run, right? You held him to 55. Jacobs negative two. And I know I talked to, to Jordan about that. It was a concerted effort after Hall broke a couple on you last yeah. week to kind of button that up. Yeah, I mean, um, again, our front our front played well in the run game. Um, and that's that's where it's got to start. It starts at the line of scrimmage every week. This this is a game that um, usually comes down to um, the bigs on both sides of the ball, and those guys don't get their names in the paper all that much. Um, um, but they are they're a catalyst for us playing well. Thanks for saying paper, by the way. That was very nice <laughs> to hear because nobody says that. Shout Spencer out Brown. to all you writers. <laughs> Particularly to Spencer Brown. I know you got a lot yeah. of film, but look, he's going against Crosby most of the day, and you really didn't hear Crosby's name all day long. Yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah, Spencer mentally I thought was really, really tough today, uh, tough to handle, and I thought Doris did a good job with the game plan and changing some things up in terms of making sure it wasn't 
you know, single blocks all the time in terms of being able to chip from time to time with, with Crosby, who's a heck of a player. And um, I think, again, everything in moderation, being able to make sure that, that that guy doesn't wreck the game or the game plan is, is where you start. What did you see from Spencer this week? Dion mentioned that the working extra time with Aaron Kroger fundamentally trying to be on task. What did you notice from him? Uh, yeah, I mean, just more than anything, I think it was his mental approach. I really do. I mean, there's, he puts time in physically. He's always done that. And, and again, he's a young player. Um, but he embraced the challenge and, and again, um, took a very humble approach and mentally tough approach, which uh, not only during the week, but also during the game. Because he, when you go against an elite rusher like that or elite player, he's going to win some. Um, but you got to be able to stay in, stay in the game mentally. Kingsley Jonathan was the best Max Crosby he's ever, ever encountered. I mean, that's I, I how practice should that. be. Yeah, that's how practice should be. Our, our guys do a great job this past week in particular on a short week. We really only had one, you know, full speed practice, um, really two um, Friday, but it was a Friday, uh, no padded practice. But that Thursday practice, our defensive line, scout, scout wise, did a phenomenal job. What can you say about Matt Milano's instincts and smarts to always just be around the ball and make big plays? Yeah. Um, you said it. I don't really have anything to add. Uh, he loves to play. Um, you know, he plays really hard, and um, he learns the game plan every week. And um, remember, this is a guy that played kind of a safety position at BC um, when we got him. So he's come so far, um, and he's done a great job. You John has had four, three fourth down conversions. Just how important is the, the trust you have in the offense to pick it up in those spots? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we didn't. We, I think we came up short on the one. Was it fourth and goal from the one? Um, so we got some work to do there. Um, but yeah, that's you know, I wanted to think more about that when I put the field goal unit out there. You know, just hey, where we were in the game, chance to go up. I think it would have put us up 14. Is that right or no? Uh, beyond that, it would have been. Never mind. It's my stats. Get my analytics. 14 to seven. You sure on that? No, that was the first yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm putting them on the spot. No, uh, but anyway, I just I wanted to. I thought it was going to be an, a chance to widen the gap, um, or um, or go up. I think it was 14. If we would have kicked the field goal, perhaps. Um, I work on work on it with my stats guy after this. But um, but anyway, I just wanted to think about it because it it was a chance to really widen the gap and and, and uh, maybe slam the door right there and. Um, I thought Dorsey, you know, and Josh did a great job and made a great play. Was it Gabe on that? Was that Gabe, yes. Gabe on that touchdown? It's a heck of a catch, right, in, in traffic. They don't get as many, um, as many chances. Khalil Shakir's yeah. got one, and he made it. I mean, what's that like? You know, he's fighting to get his snaps, and then he makes a play like well, that. Well, you got to be ready. And, and we talked, uh, I think it was last week, you know, there's different roles when you start a season. And um, it doesn't mean – you know, just because your role is your role doesn't mean that's all you're capable of. But my challenge and my, and my ask of them was to be ready when their number is called because it's going to happen. Very rarely do you just play the same, you know, 40-some guys every week or, or what have you. So you're going to need beyond even 53. So whether it's practice squad or Shakir in this case, um, we have confidence in all of them. And, and it's, it's, a, it's a tip of my cap to him of, of, hey, way to be ready to go. And he made a big play for us. Coach, how much did that get you fired up to come out of halftime to get that nine-minute drive? Yeah, you're we wearing on them. You know, those again, our, our offensive line did a really good job of wearing on them, and and then eventually you wear them down. And um, and I think that's where you see the running game really start to take off late in the game when when we're just leaning on them. You know, how much easier is it for Josh to manage their offense when you have that type of balance? Yeah, two-dimensional. You know, I mentioned it earlier. When you are when you have a two-dimensional approach and you can keep it, um, and that starts with the line of scrimmage. Okay. Yeah. Question on Osiris Torrance, his play on the offense, being a rookie on that offensive line. Yeah, it doesn't say, you know, much at all. He just he goes about his business and makes sure he's prepared every week. He's done a good job to this point. Sean, what have you seen out of Greg Rousseau so far through two games? It seems like he's taking this game to another level. Well, I think he's playing more. Uh, he's playing more nasty, um, and that's uh, that's what you got to do. He's always had the the finesse part. Now he's starting to bake in some nastiness to his game. Is that something that comes with time, or the fact that he's around veterans like Leonard Floyd and, and Von Miller? Yeah, but I would say definitely their leadership, um, Von's leadership, Leonard. Um, I mean, Leonard's a nasty player, even though he's not 
quite a you know a big player. He's he's certainly athletic, but he he's a nasty physical player. And um, and then and then Greg really just continually always trying to improve his game. He's he's just very curious about the game, and he works extremely hard at it. Controlling the time of possession as you did, they only had three possessions in the second half. How hard is it for an offense when they're standing on the sidelines 9, 12, 15 minutes in real time? For an offense? For, an, for their offense. Yeah. They're off the field with great lengths of time. Well, that's, a, that's, the, that's the greatest defense there is, right? <laughs> is when, they're, when our offense is controlling the, the clock and controlling the game, starting at the line of scrimmage. I think that's a I – mean, you watch Super Bowls over the years, and you're saying, hey, when those elite quarterbacks who usually play in the Super Bowl – when that other offense can can keep that other quarterback on the sideline, that's uh that's the best defense you've got.